In this video, I am going to show you how to make a Roblox UGC item. Super simple, and it's hopefully going to be beginner friendly. If you don't know anything about Blender, I would suggest you go to my very basic video. I'll put a tag in the top corner of the screen right now because that will explain to you everything you need to know about Blender to even partake in this. However, I'll try and still make this so that if you don't know much, you can still do it. So we are going to make a top hat here. Simple but effective. It's a good way to learn a few of the core skills and key binds. What we want to do first is we want to import a dummy. We need we need to import like a Roblox character so we know how it scales. So what you want to do is just load up Roblox Studio. It's pretty simple. Just load up Studio like this. Go to plugins and then in plugins there should be a rig builder by default. And with this rig builder you want to do a block rig and that should spawn a nice, a nice little block rig. Um, the block rig is my favourite anyway. You can you can do all the different options if you would rather do a a woman rig. You could you could always have a woman rig. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm gonna use a block rig. But also, what you might want to do is the best thing to do is just put it in the middle. You want it in the middle, so when you put it into Blender, it is just perfectly in the center right here. So to do that, you basically just want to go. Make sure you click on it and then go to the properties and then in position. I think you do zero comma two comma zero yes and as you can see and this will basically put it very much in the center just as you need it and then what we want to do is we want to export this and put it in blender so to do that you right click on the dummy export selection and then pick somewhere in your files where you want to save it you can call it whatever you want i'm just going to call it dummy and now that i've exported it i can move over to blender now what we want to do now that we are in blender is we want to go to file import and then wave front obj this option click on it this will now pop up with a file explorer and you want to navigate to where you saved your dummy thing. So go and open that file. Just to say as well, um, see here I've got dummy, obj, dummy, mtl. Double click on the obj. Leave the mtl, just double click on the obj and it should import it. Pretty sure Blender looks like this by default. However, I prefer working with Cavity on. It just allows you to see the hard edges better. But what we're gonna do is we want to go to this little drop down here. Uh, make sure you're in solid mode the second one in click this little drop down and then go to flat to make it whiter then go to shadow ticket go to cavity ticket and then it also looks better if you go here to like world and you kind of got these harsh edges which in my opinion just look better also this weird like gray box thing that is literally just like a hit box you can delete it if you want but you don't need to okay so basically what you want to do is you want to start by adding a cylinder. For anyone who doesn't even know how to move, this video isn't gonna be complete basics. However, if you use the scroll wheel and press it down, if you press down your scroll wheel, you can kind of scroll around this center point. And if, say for example, you're like this, and like spinning around nothing, just do shift and C. Shift and C will basically relock you onto everything in your seat. It's really helpful. And if you do want to move, like say for example, I want to look at the face, if you do shift, and hold shift whilst pressing the scroll wheel down, you can kind of shuffle up like this. So you go like this, and then you can do a mix of scroll wheel down and shift and scroll wheel down to move around. Also, you can scroll out and scroll in to like you know, zoom in now. So that, that's a, the movement basics. So what we want to do next is we want to add a cylinder to start with our top hat. We're going to start this by doing shift and A, mesh, and then we're gonna go to cylinder. Basically what Shift A does, it pops up this add menu. It's like add, and it shows you loads of stuff you can add. But we just want to use the mesh. And then all these meshes, we use a cylinder. And as you can see down here, it adds a cylinder. If your cylinder spawns like over here, oops. If your cylinder spawns like over there, it's because you've got your 3D cursor in the, in the middle of nowhere. And again, Shift C, reset your 3D cursor. It is pretty handy. So now if your 3D cursor is right here in the center, do Shift A, mesh, and add a cylinder. And now don't click on anything. In the bottom left corner, you'll see this add cylinder menu. And if you pop this up, you'll see quite a lot of settings. If you don't see this menu, it's because if you like click on something, it disappears, it's gone. So you just delete the delete cylinder and then add another cylinder, uh, just like this, and make sure it's there. Uh, it's usually popped down. So pop it up and then in vertices, this is basically, if you see this cylinder, this is how many lines there are on it. So you see we've got three down here. It has three sides. It has three sides to the shape. If you go to five, it'll have five. Um, however, we want ours to be cylindrical, but not a lot of vertices, because if you have this vertices too high, it'll lag loads. Um, so you want it to be optimized. 
And it, this is where you want to decide whether you want to go for a low poly one. You can go with like eight vertices and make a low poly flat face hat. Or you might want to make your hat a little more smooth and, you know, not that low poly look. So I'm, I'm not gonna do low poly here. I'm gonna go and try and have it smooth without having too many vertices. 10 would work. 10 vertices does definitely work, but 12 is probably best. 12 is probably the best for something like a top hat. So now that we've done this, we've got this added. The next thing we want to do, I prefer doing this in the side view. So you can basically use this little thing up here um, and click on Y minus, or the one that looks front on. So if I click Y min minus Y here, you'll see it, it snaps you like front on. And this is pretty much the same as before. If you scroll, if you zoom in with scroll, you can see it like scrolls in and do shift and press your scroll wheel down to move. And yeah, if you want to leave this mode, you can literally just do scroll wheel down and move like normal. And yeah, that, that's pretty handy. Also a quicker way, instead of using this little spinny thing up here, is just use your number pad. One is front view, three is side view, and seven is top view. But for the sake of the video, I'll use this just for those of you that don't have a number pad. And what you want to do here is you want to get this, this cylinder, and then press G to move, and then Z. And Z will lock it on the Z axis. As you can see, it will now only move on that blue Z axis, which is just what we want. I want to move this so this little golden dot in the middle lines up around with the top of the head. You can do Z and then like go into wireframe to, to double check this. So as you see, we kind of have pass through. An easy way to change this is literally just to go up here in the top right and change solid mode to wireframe. Th these are the two different modes. However, there are two other modes. This is the material preview mode and this is rendered mode. Don't touch these. These two are more complicated. Just use solid and wireframe for now. So I'm gonna use wireframe to make this little dot in the middle go to the top of the head, just so that we have everything lined up. And now what we want to do is we want to make this kind of like the bottom of a top hat. Basically what we're going to start by doing is we want to create this kind of like rim that you can see at the bottom. You can see it goes right around the back and it's quite thin, so it's something like that in thickness and again that would come all the way around to create that rim that rim look that you have here so this is what we're going to do first create this kind of cylinder for the rim without having this top bit on so to do this just select your cylinder press s once you've got it selected to scale and as you see this will shrink it and just like before we're going to press z on our keyboard and this will lock it to the z axis and as you can see this will shrink it a lot and then once you're happy with how thick it is you're going to click but as you can see here this is far too big so i'm going to go and make sure that this thing is smaller so it just fits the head a bit better something like that because you still want it to kind of come over the head a bit but you don't want it to be like all the way gaping out like this <laughs> that'd be like a sombrero but basically what i'm going to do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it down a bit. I feel like moving it down a bit is gonna be important because you can see it's just a bit high over the top. But it doesn't matter that this bit of the head's showing because it won't be once we add the top. So now everything we've done is in objects mode. Object mode is basically where you can select all the different objects in your scene and move them around. As you can see, all your objects are here. But now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be using edit mode. Edit mode allows us to view each object in our scene more detailed and actually like start to adjust the topology individually, vertice by vertice. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to select our cylinder and there's two ways to go in and out of edit mode. Whilst you've got your mesh you want to go into edit mode on, selected. The easiest way is probably to just go up here to the top left and click where it says object mode and then drop down and go to edit mode. And, and how you can see there's like all these, these dots on it that are all gold and yeah, that's each vertice. Another way you can easily change, if you want to go back to edit to object mode, you can always just click on edit mode and go to object mode. But you can also change this by just clicking tab. Tab goes into edit mode and then tab goes out of edit mode. Pretty simple. And basically what I want to do is, again, we want to go to edit mode and all of these that are orange are selected. So we don't want to have any selected. So to do this, to deselect them, just do Alt A. And Alt A will basically just delete, deselect everything. And now what you can do is you can actually click on vertices and move them around with the G key. So what I've done here, I literally just clicked on the vertice and then G to move. And then you left click and it does it. I'm doing control Z to undo. So what we want to do here is actually, we want to basically get this loop, this top loop for the top hat and kind of make another loop on the inside, just around the head where we're going to extrude it upwards. So right now we have the circle around the top hat. All we want to do now is we want to get this circle and make another circle on the inside. And this circle, we're then going to go and extrude upwards 
and when we extrude it upwards, it'll also have the circle on the top, which will create this kind of top hat shape. So basically what we want to do is we want to select all of these around the top. One way you could do this, you could just click, shift, and hold shift and click them all. And you can do that, but there's a quicker way. And the quicker way is to hold alt, and then click on like this edge, and it'll select the whole thing. This is really quick, especially when you've got like loads of loops and stuff. This is an easier way to do it. So that's what we're gonna do. Basically what you want to do now to do this kind of loop on the inside that I was trying to demonstrate, literally just click I on your keyboard and what it will do is it will inset that face. And you can kind of see here it is creating this extra loop on the inside. And I'm gonna go to about here and then left click to confirm. And there we go, we have this loop in place. And now what we want to do is we actually want to get this, this loop down here and we want to make it go up. We, we need to get this up to make this whole top hat top bit. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do E with this, this loop selected. So if you don't have it selected, you can again do the alt trick where you do alt and then click and it will it'll select it all. So what you want to do now is you want to do E to go up and basically now just move it up as high as you want it and then left click. And that is your top hat shape in place. And now, as you can see, this still does look kind of like a low poly hat because we haven't shaded it smooth. So I'm gonna show you how we can shade this smooth to get that really, really smooth looking look. So what we're gonna do is we've got to go into edit mode with tab. You can do A to select everything. And then up here, there's quite a lot of options. But all we want for this one is the little face tab. So go to face, shade smooth, and then click it. And as you can see, it looks a bit weird right now. It kind of has this weird like dark look. And there is a simple way to fix this. But to do this, select your, your mesh out of edit mode, make sure you go out of edit mode for this. And then here, go down to this little triangle called Object Data Properties. And there are a lot of tabs here. However, there's a little Normals tab. Click on the Normals one and then tick Auto Smooth. And what this does is it basically just kind of makes it, so it smooths the mesh, but it doesn't smooth it on all angles. It only smooths it on angles less than 30 degrees. However, if you want it to be doing it differently, it's so like some of these angles, I they will be less than 30 degrees. However, if you want them to be a little softer, you could go and do this and like drag it, or you can click on it and just type a number. I prefer using 50. I feel 50 gives like a really smooth look on a lot of low poly objects without having to have a bunch of vertices and stuff, uh, you know, contributing to lag. So there we go. We have the smooth look on it now. I know you can see each individual line. However, this is because we have cavity on. If we turn cavity off, you can see this thing is actually gone and it is now a smooth top hat. You'll see actually if we turn off shade smooth, uh, if we do shade flat, you'll see that you can see the lines a lot harsher. And now I'm gonna show you how you can take this hat and add some color to it. The most popular way for like simple items like this and a really beginner friendly way is just to use a gradient palette. So I'm gonna show you how to use a gradient palette right now. But in the future, I might do some tutorials on how to do stuff like Substance Painter, or maybe even if I can learn Blender Texture Paint to a standard where I feel like I can make a tutorial on it, maybe I'll do that. But for now, we're gonna just use a gradient palette and I'll link one in the description. So if you want to get this gradient palette, go to the description and click the link. I do want to credit the creator of the texture palette though, uh, in, in Fenzia. He is the person who like made the, the texture palette thing like, of gradient. So yeah, check this guy out. This guy's really good. If you want to learn how to model, I, you know, he has a load of really good videos and just watching him model is so interesting. It will help you learn a lot. So just, I never watched this how to make an airplane video, but I'm sure it will teach you how to make an airplane better than anyone could. Uh, and just watching a model teaches you so much. But anyway, this is the, the link to his gradient palette. I'll link you it in the description. So basically just go here, right click on it, save image as, and then just save it in your files somewhere where you'll remember it. And now back over to Blender, we want to actually add this gradient palette to our model. And one thing that's probably important before we start this is that we turn it on so you can actually see the texture in solid mode. So if you go up here to the top right corner and click this drop down arrow again, where we had the settings done before, by default, this color one is on material. You don't want it on material, you want it on texture. This will actually allow the texture to pass through even in solid mode. You actually see it on our, on our dummy, the, the Roblox texture will come through here. That's why he has a smiley face. But anyway, make sure you have your top hat selected here and then go down to this little ball this checkered ball here material properties and then go to the new button click on the new button and then it'll add a new material so i'm just gonna name this material uh grade gradient palette uh that's probably the easiest name to call it you could call it top hat texture as well if you want to and then where it says base color there's a little yellow dot 
click on that yellow dot and then go over to image texture. And now that you've gone and you, you'll get a new few options here, you can either do new or open. We're going to do open. Now that you've clicked open, it'll pop open a file explorer and you want to navigate in your files to where you save the palette. And now that I've selected it, you'll see here in Fenzia color palette, I've got it all up and it should look it might not look exactly like this, but it'll just have colors everywhere. And that is because your UVs are just the default UVs. And when you've been modeling, that have got a bit messed up as well. So anyway, what we're going to do now is we are going to make sure that we have the colors we want in the areas we want. You can do this in the default layout mode and just like pull out a new tab and then go to the UV editor. However, it's a lot easier literally just to I'll just close this. Go over to the UV editing tab, which is default in Blender. And on one half, you have texture texture mode, uh, the, the, the image, and on the other half, you have your model. Sometimes when you actually go into texture mode, it'll reset all your settings. So I definitely suggest going, and if, if you can't see the texture and stuff, make sure that you've got your settings done. So again, if you want to make sure it looks the same as mine, you can just go and copy all these settings. So go to flat, go to texture, go to turn on shadow, cavity, make sure type is on world and just bump these up to the max. And it should look similar to mine. Again, remember shift C will just recenter everything. And what we want to do is I'm just gonna, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna make the bottom of my hat green and the top of my hat pink. You can do whatever you want. So let's just, let's just demonstrate here. I'll be making like the bottom bit here, like all this, and then this as well. This is gonna be pink. And then, oh, I said the other way around. I'll just do pink at the bottom and green at the top. I can't remember which one, which way around I said I'd do it, but anyway. This is how mine's gonna look. So to do this, I basically just got to have the two separate parts. I can literally just do the trick like before, the Alt trick, where you press Alt and then click, and it'll select the loop, and then do it again, Shift, Alt, and click. So I'll basically select it as well as the other one. And now this is it selected. As you'll see, everything is gold, all the bit we want to have this color. We're gonna go into this side mode again by clicking minus Y, and then we want to now unwrap this so that we can use it on the palette. Actually, right now, we can use this shell by scaling it down with S and then G to move it around. However, it's much better to have this projected so that the gradient really can come through and show. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do U and then this is the UV mapping mode and basically we want to go and just select one. The one we want to select specifically is project from view. If we click on this, you'll see it comes up with this shell here. Just, you know, select it if you want. And then what we want to do is press S to scale it down because right now that is too big and make it so yeah, it's about that size. And then what we want to do is use G to move it around the editor to where we want it. So I said I was going to do the top green, I'm pretty sure. So what we can do is put that in green and as you see, it is green on here. Um, if you want like a more harsh gradient, like you want it to be this light green at the top and dark green at the bottom, you can do S and then Y, so you scale it on the Y axis and then just do G and Y. And as you see, at the bottom it's dark and at the top it's light. And now that we've got this green bit done, we're gonna go and do the pink bit. You don't have to do these colors. This is just me doing it for demonstration purposes. So go back into edit mode with tab, do quick, uh, do Alt A to deselect everything so that um, nothing's selected. And now you want to go and do the same as you did before, do Alt to click the bottom one, Shift Alt click this one, and then Shift Alt click finally this one. And as you see now, this bottom bit will be selected. And then you want to go again into minus Y side view, do U, project from view. And as you see, again, we'll get a shell. So just highlight it and then do S to scale and then G to move. And we can get a nice pink bottom to our top hat. If you go back to layout mode, you'll see here, everything is applied. You have your top hat made with color and all that stuff. I really hope this video did teach you enough of the basics of Blender to make some UGC items of your own. If anything wasn't clear, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll make sure to explain it a lot better. I'm gonna make some more UGC tutorials. I don't know if they'll all be as basic as this one because this one I really wanted to make it beginner friendly. So in the future, maybe the UGC tutorials I'll make a bit a bit more intermediate, going showing you more advanced kind of techniques. But yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.